All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna to learn about submitting PARs. We're going to uh, talk about how a soldier can submit a PAR or personal action request. And we're gonna talk about how an HR pro can submit a PAR on behalf of uh, another soldier. Now, PARs are in part a way to replace certain actions that were previously done on army forms. And you may have heard that 4187s are going to be replaced by PARs, and that is not entirely true. 4187s will still serve their purpose because not every action that we do in the HR community will be done through a PAR. So they'll still have their place in the military, but other forms may have gone to the wayside. Uh, for example, the DA Form 268, Request for a Flag, can now be done through a PAR. Awards are a type of PAR, and so certain levels of award can be done through IPSE on a PAR. But today we're just gonna talk about how a, a soldier can submit a PAR or how a HR Pro can submit a PAR on behalf of someone. And right now I'm currently logged in as an HR Pro and I'm on my self-service screen. So just to show you how a soldier could do it, they would click on this top button, this top tile called My PAR. And when the action comes up, they can click this create personal action, select the effective date, and then they would pick the type of action. Now these type of actions are the PARs that a soldier can request on themselves. The menu gets a little bit larger as you become an HR pro and you can submit on behalf of someone else. And as IPSE continues to grow in future releases, the amount of PARs or the, the menu of PARs will get larger. But just to give you an idea the, the, of what's available and, and kind of how it affects things, we have the IPSE user guide and table 7-2 uh, will list what all the available PARs are and then um, what, you know, obviously what they do and then does it impact pay, does it generate orders, and then who can initiate it. So as we go through, we see that some of these are a yes, so they will impact your pay. So a demotion, for example, um, is a par that a um, initiated by the soldier or the member, it will impact your pay and it will generate orders. So this little, this little chart here will tell you what, what the par is and then what it's used for. Um, so we're gonna do something real simple here. We're not gonna submit this as a soldier on themselves. We're gonna go log in and submit one on behalf of a member in the organization. So what we'll do is we'll just cancel this here and we will go back to the home screen and change this to HR professional. So now I am an HR professional at the company, or in this case, the troop, and I'm going to submit a PAR on behalf of a soldier within the troop. So what I will do is I'll click on HR personal actions request. And when this screen comes up, it's gonna ask me to search for someone. So again, if we click on the search menu and put in the individual's EMPL ID, we'll be able to conduct a search. Now, sometimes you might see operator ID here as opposed to EMPL ID, and they're really the same number except for the .01 or .02. So an operator ID has the .01, .02, and that represents their, their component. And a .01 is a soldier, so active, reserve, or national guard. .02 is a civilian or contractor. .3 is gonna be another service, so Air Force, Marine Corps, Navy. And then .404 is gonna be for uh, foreign nationals. So what we'll do is we'll just take off the, the .0 here and, and make it an EMPL ID. And I hit search. Now you could use last name in your organization that might be easier than remembering all these EMPL IDs or having a roster. But in some cases, you know, there might be 15 Smiths or 12 Joneses or something like that. Uh, at a battalion, probably easier than brigade or higher. So we'll hit the search bar and we will find Sergeant Ferrer. And we're gonna submit a PAR on behalf of Sergeant Ferrer to go to the S1 and get approved. So we'll click on his name and we will create a PAR. So the effective date can be either today or in the past. So if you're submitting this, you know, a few days after the action occurred, you could change the effective date. Um, so we're just gonna use today. And then the action is, uh, we are gonna do a qualification and skills par. So as a reminder, 
the definition and what these actions represent are on the table 7-2 of the IPSA user guide. So it'll give you sort of a brief description of, of what you're looking at here. So, you know, real quick, we could request a correction to the records. We could submit an award on behalf. We could demote or perform some sort of disciplinary action, laterally appoint this individual if they were a specialist or a first sergeant. Miscellaneous is going to be a flag and that we'll cover that in a separate um, in a separate video series. So I'll, I'll pop an iCard up there for you. Uh, a waiver is going to be a, a promotion action. But we're just going to select qualification and skills. We're just going to give this individual an ASI. And the reason is we're going to add, or it says change ASI, but really it means add, edit, or, or delete. So we're going to go ahead and pop that in there and hit continue. Now, if you look over to the left here, we've got four stages. And I, can, I suggest that after each stage, you hit this save button before you go to the next stage. And the system will probably prompt you to do that in a few cases. So it provides you some information. It tells you what the PAR is going to be, who is it for, you know, what unit they're in. It's going to also provide you some data that's relevant to ASIs and MOSs, so ASVAB scores and pull -hees. And Then it's going to ask you the effective date of the action again. So we'll just use today. And then we're going to say the reason is that this individual completed formal training. The authority typically for these is going to be DA PAM. 6, 11, 21. And what I mean by typically for these, I mean MOS changes, ASIs, and things like that. And we're going to go ahead and select the ASI menu. And you'll see this long list of ASI codes. And they all start with an E. Now that just represents enlisted. So a warrant would be a W and an officer would be an O. So you want to make sure that if you're submitting a PAR on an enlisted person, you're picking an E ASI or an E MOS. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to go down to 2 Bravo and give this individual the Air Assault ASI. And there's no secondary ASI because he didn't have one. We're not going to remove one. There's no additional or no PDSI uh, in here. So then in the more information, uh, we can simply type in completed Air Assault School. Okay, now we'll click save as we talked about and the next button. Now here's where we would put attachments. So uh, completion certificate of the course that they give you at the school would be a good example of an attachment for this type of PAR. So what we'll do is we'll just click add an attachment. We'll go find it on the computer and we will add it to the file. And done. So now is the the document that would support that that this action. So we'll say um, grad cert. Okay, and we'll click save, and then we're going to go on to the validation of this request. And this is where it's going to validate that the individual is eligible for this action. So are they flagged, barred? Uh, those types of things. It runs through a series of checks to determine if this individual is eligible for this part to continue. So we'll click the validate button and we get three green check boxes, which means we can move forward. So we're going to hit next and it's going to give us a summary. So now we have a quick summary, a review of what we're submitting. We're submitting a change request for this individual with this effective information and the approval chain. Now, as you're when this is being submitted, all PARs are going to go directly to the S1 pool. So it doesn't offer the opportunity to insert a workflow because the S1 will accept it and insert the workflow. And that's actually our next video is how would an HR professional in the battalion S1 or brigade S1 accept an action from the S1 pool, insert a workflow template, and then move it forward. So at this point, we're really done. We're effectively complete with this PAR request. So we're going to hit submit and send it to the S1 pool and it's been submitted. So now the S1 will receive this PAR. They will review it and they'll either kick it back or move it forward. So be sure to stay tuned and check out the next video. I'll put an I card up there. We're going to talk about how the S1 would receive that and push it forward. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like this video and leave some comments. Let us know what other material you think would be useful. We got a lot more stuff coming up. Uh, pushing it out for, for Ipsay Release 3, Defend and Serve.